Hey, this is Pastor Dana Coverstone, and I'm sitting in the same chair in the same place I was five months ago when I shared a dream. And I want to bring a couple things up before I get into more detail about what I'm going to say today. I made it very clear when I shared these dreams that I'm a pastor. I'm not a prophet. I've never called myself a prophet. There are people who are calling me prophet, and I don't want to be called that because I'm a pastor. I had a dream, three dreams specifically. Voted into a video, a 15-minute, nine-second video, go on Facebook for 1,100 friends, having no idea what would happen in just a week. That a week later, there'd be a million views. Um, I shared it as a pastor because I had concerns with dreams I'd had. I saw things happening. And I was concerned, once again, as a pastor, as a family man, as a friend, I wanted to warn people. And I believe, if anything, God gave me these dreams to warn the church, to wake up the church, and to get people praying. Um, just in the last two days, I have received hundreds of emails and messages, uh, even text messages. Uh, some of which are basically saying, nothing in your dreams came true. And others saying, everything in your dreams have come true. Some saying, all oh, the timing is off and this and that. All I know is that God gave me dreams. I shared them on Facebook. I made it clear I was not a prophet. Uh, I made three recommendations. And that was probably... The worst thing I could have done, so to, so to speak. Although I don't regret doing it now because I, I believe, you know, I've, I've seen already this week uh, food banks, lines, miles long. Uh, we're already starting to see shortages again in the stores for certain things and items. And uh, try to find ammunition today. Can't do it. Um, I'm still buying silver. I'm still, you know, putting some money aside for those things because I do believe we're going to see the financial realm of our nation changed. They were talking about a great reset. You know, guys like Trudeau and Schwab talking about a great reset. And that involves primarily finances of the world. Um, you've got digital currency on the horizon and being pushed. But nonetheless, I want to first of all do one thing. I want to commend the people who began to pray. One of my dreams was about a September Psalm Assembly event. Uh, and people, people prayed. People got up, people prayed. Uh, I heard about prayer times, prayer meetings, all sorts of things from around the nation, even around the world, of people praying. Uh, I believe the dreams that God gave me were warning dreams. I do believe God gave me the dreams. I'm not going to apologize or change that. I believe God gave me the dreams. And I shared the dreams as a warning also to reveal some of the things the enemy was doing, how he was working. But I do believe people woke up. I was part of a prayer time in Dallas, Texas, or Plano, Texas, with over 400 people who spent 40 hours praying and fasting for the nation and for President Trump and for the situation with the White House. Uh, on October 31st, I spent another uh, eight hours, 12 hours, with some people praying uh, for the nation and praying for the election that was upcoming. So I want to thank people who did that. You know, if Moses... Moses asked God not to wipe the people out, and God changed his mind. And I'm gracious for that. Um, and I believe that our prayers did make a huge difference. And I want to invite people to continue to pray. Keep praying because things haven't been finalized. And because things are obviously heating up. Uh, we're in the December now. We still don't have a president-elect. There's all sorts of election fraud issues going on in, se in several states. Um, it's gone away the Supreme Court in some states, and those things are being pushed on the Supreme Court at the federal level. So a lot of things about the data dream are, are still in play. Now, did everything happen that I saw? But I did not say all these things are going to happen. I had a dream where I saw the headlines of pandemics, and I saw people in lines. I saw hospitalizations. I saw weary doctors. Now, I read the headlines this morning. I see hospitalizations are, are worse now than they were in the spring with COVID. Uh, I see doctors, and I see shortages of doctors and nurses in a lot of places. Um, but did everything happen exactly as I saw in the dreams? Well, of course not. But we have to understand that dreams are symbolic. And I'll tell you this, I've learned a whole lot about dreams and visions in the, uh, in the five months since I sat in this chair and gave the first one out. Um, once again, I'm a pastor, and I shared those things because I believe God was wanting to warn the church, was wanting to wake the church up things that were going on. And I want to encourage people to continue to, continue to pray today. Do not stop praying. We can't put our pajamas on and go back to bed. We can't roll over like it's okay. We're all done now. It's not. 
you know, there is still a whole lot at work and a whole lot at play, not just with the election, but things happening around the world that impact our country. The biggest thing I've heard from people is, well, the U.N. soldiers weren't here in November. Okay, I understand that. Someone even sent me a message today saying, Pastor Dana, even if there are U.N. soldiers here by Friday, I will not believe you. Everybody has the right to believe or not believe what they want. The other main thing that I did tell people to do before they made any decisions was to pray about what they did. I had people send me messages like, should I move? Should I sell my house? Should I, should I downsize? Should I build a bunker? Should I cash in my 401k? I'm a pastor. I shared those things so that people realized that there were situations going on and happening that I believe were coming, and I still believe are coming, so that people could make wise decisions in prayer. And so if you made decisions without praying about it, once again, I made sure I said, folks, before you make any decisions, you need to make sure you pray. Hear what the Lord's saying. I believe there were warning dreams to wake America up, to wake the church up. I believe the persecution, the opposition, I believe the wolves are running around even right now, attacking as many people. There's a lot of people in the prophetic world, and the prophetic world right now is very, very divided. Uh, I've seen the good side of the prophetic world, and I have seen the ugly side of the prophetic world. I'm a pastor of a church. We had 50 here on Sunday morning because of the Thanksgiving holiday. I I pastor in the middle of nowhere, okay? I never asked for the platform God's given me, but obviously he did it for a reason. I'm thankful for people that have woke up. But I want to encourage faith. It's not time to relax. It's not time to relent. We have to have even more faith in God because the darkest time is always right before the dawn. And I believe things are going to get darker in that sense. So I also want to give God the glory for all the people that have gotten saved, backsliders that have come back to the Lord, people filled with the Spirit, people waking up, people witnessing. That makes a difference to me. I have personally been on the phone with over 300 people who wanted to get their lives right with the Lord, who said the sinner's prayer with me or I prayed with. Uh, we've had people from 40, 46 states in our church since June who want to talk to me or meet with me. And, and not everybody's going to be happy with anything or everything. There's nothing I can say right now that will make everybody happy. And from the very first day when I put that video out, Uh, I realize I can never again say anything publicly or privately without it being criticized, analyzed, scrutinized, or even sanitized. So I'm thankful that God's given me a whole different platform. I never asked for it, wasn't looking for it, but it's there. But we've got to continue to pray. We've got to continue to seek God's face. We've got to continue to be on our knees and remain humble before the Lord. Now, if the dreams never, ever come true, and, I, and I'm going to say this, there's a lot of things that have happened in the dream, that were in the dreams that have happened, things we have seen. The headlines confirm those things. And I'm not going to argue about every, every situation. Once again, dreams are mostly symbolic. Nine, 99.9% of the time, dreams are symbolic. They're symbolic. Most of the time, they are not literal. But I do believe God exposed him in his plans. I believe he called the church to pray through these warning dreams. And I believe he encouraged a lot of people to change their lifestyles. And I also have gotten a whole lot more support letters and emails and encouragement in just the last couple of, the last couple of days. And even since I made the post last night on Facebook about that, I was going to be making this statement today. Everybody, a lot of people out there want me to come up here and apologize. I had dreams. And I shared those dreams online. I do believe God moved. I do believe God uh, woke up a lot, a significant amount of people in the church to pray, to have greater faith in Him and deeper faith in Him. And I believe those prayers are important, especially as we're still without a president. We're still without a, a an election result. We see a lot of chaos and confusion in Washington, D.C. Uh, a lot of stories that are not being covered in the mainstream news. And a lot of stories that just aren't known about things that are happening around the world that apply to our country. But I want to stand today in the belief that God still speaks to dreams and visions. I realize that when I put that out there, I put my set my I set myself up at great risk. I have been cussed at, screamed at, yelled at, had a guy show up at my at my house at six thirty in the morning who ended up getting arrested in town later that day for excessive violence in a building in a store showed up to accuse me, showed up to harass me. Um, I've been cussed out more in the last five months and in my entire lifetime, and I'm 51. 
Um, I have had people yell at me, scream at me, um, demand things from me. I've, I've had people call me every name in the book. False prophet's been a nice title that I've gotten based on the other things I've been called. But once again, I never said I was a prophet. I shared these dreams and I shared these things to wake up people. And I had, no, once again, I had no idea that that video would go viral like it did. But I also heard from over 40,000 people who told me, Pastor Dana, when I saw that video, it resonated deep in my heart, deep in my spirit. And it confirmed the things that I felt, that things were going wrong, hard things were coming, difficult times were coming. And it confirmed those things with me. And that's 40,000 people that have personally reached out to me, phone calls, emails, text messages, coming to the church, driving from out of state just to meet me, sit down and talk and say, hey, that changed my life. So I'm thankful for those things. I'm grateful for those things. Because there's a lot of things about it that still doesn't make sense. And I realize that there'll be probably all kinds of comments and hate-filled messages on here. I'll be called every name in the book. And that's okay. I've, I've kind of gotten used to that the last five months. All I know is this. God gave me dreams and I was obedient to share them. On Facebook, on YouTube, wherever they, where they have gone. A lot of people are going to be mad, angry at me, whether anything happens in the dreams or not. I even had someone say, I would have been mad. You know, I was hoping you and troops would show up. I've had people say, oh, you know, hopefully they never will show up. So either way, I'm, I'm, in the, I'm kind of standing in the middle. There's not a whole lot that I can do. Um, here's what I'm saying. I'm grateful that people woke up. I'm grateful that people pray. And I hope and pray they continue to pray and seek God earnestly. I pray the church understands that persecution is already started. It's coming. It's here. And it's going to get worse in the American church. I, I hope people understand that within the church itself, there's a huge division. There's a huge, there's a right and a left. There's, there's, there's sheep and goats and they're in the church. And that division is going to become even, even greater. I believe the persecution and the wolves, the wolves are out there. Man, believe me, the wolves are out there. Um, we're seeing all sorts of lockdowns, all sorts of potential things happening within the country. We see the economy, which says it's, it's you know, hit 30,000 with the Dow this last week. And yet jobless claims continue to go up, more people out of work. And headlines also suggest there'll be a whole lot of people <sighs> losing their homes by March this coming year. Because things are happening and things are going on. So I'm thankful for the, the, the love, the support, the encouragement that I have gotten from so many people. And I'll take the criticism. I'll take, uh, I'll take all the people yelling and screaming and cussing me out and calling me every name in the book. That, that's okay. Um, I didn't realize how big the video would go. I don't think anybody, I, I, there's no way I could have had any idea. Um, but I do know this, God... Years ago, through an evangelist, spoke to me and said that I would be preaching to hundreds of thousands of people one time. At one time, prophesying to hundreds of thousands of people. And that was back in 1996. And I never, never had any clue how that would happen until these dreams went viral. And uh, I'm not trying to uh, get anything from anybody. I'm trying to warn the church. And I will continue to share dreams that God gives me. And you have the right to ignore them or criticize them or say whatever you want to say about them. That, that's fine. That's, that's fine. Um, I've got a lot of folks praying with me during the mornings, and I greatly appreciate that. A lot of folks seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I'm grateful for that. I'm going to continue to do what I do. Um, I, I have no regrets about sharing the dreams that I've shared because, once again, I'm a pastor. And when I had the dreams about the things that I saw, I was concerned that I shared with 1,100 friends on Facebook. And I would do that again in a heartbeat. Um, and I know, once again, a lot of folks want to say, well, you need to apologize because none of the dreams have come true or half the dreams have come true. Once again, dreams are symbolic. I do believe God speaks in dreams and visions. I believe he still speaks today. I believe they're an extension of, of the word of knowledge and word of wisdom. And I do believe that God has exposed some of the plans of the enemy. And it's encouraged the church to wake up. But we cannot go back to sleep. We cannot go back to slumber. We can't say, well, the election's almost over, this or that. No, we have to remain diligent and steadfast in our prayers and in showing the things that we need to show. And also, um, keep sharing your dreams. Keep sharing, sharing your visions. Keep sharing the hope that you have. And keep trusting God to do what he wants to do in you and through you. 
And that's what I'm saying about the dreams that I had. I still believe God speaks in dreams and visions. I'm so trusting God to continue to speak to me and others in dreams and visions and believe in God to do what he's going to do with all of us. Thank you.